all of the options out there and mm -hmm. is unafraid to use all of them. And also his Tyrio play, I think that's what really gathered the team up when they actually brought in the triple global. His Tyrio play was awesome. The sanctification timing and the aggro timing were pretty good also. As we are waiting to jump into our first battleground reveal. I wonder what it's gonna be. I, I'm pretty sure the bands will be most likely the StarCraft man, especially Warhead or Braxis banned by MVP Black. Well, let's take a look very soon as we are about to jump into the battleground. Not yet. <laughs> Not quite yet. Rich is adjusting his chair. Mm -hmm. And you called it. Oh! Brax is, is open. MVP Black banning Warhead Junction and Tempest banning Towers of Doom. They've done their study and we're going into first map Dragonshire, chosen by MVP Black. Tempest will have first ban, first pick. So this isn't too bad for a, a Tempest, essentially, because MVP Black. Well, their best map indeed is Dragonshire. They are undefeated on this map this year. That's right. However, the thing is that MVP Black tend to first pick stitches on Dragonshire. This has been something that they have been doing, and it has been contributing massively to their success on this map. And Tempest obviously know it. And Sign is a pretty damn good stitches player himself. So does he want to first pick it, or... Are they going to ban it, or are they going to bring in some stuff? Well, Stitches, technically, I, I really think that Tempest should approach this by just first picking Stitches if they can, because Stitches, on this patch, and looking at the statistics for HCT Korea and Europe combined, Stitches has the highest win rate out of all like heroes that are mm -hmm. solidly in the meta. He's at 61% right now on this patch. Wow, that's insanely high, and I think that will can be changed by the support span. We already see the support ban, and of course, Black has to consider banning Genji because even though Stitches will, is open, when Genji is open, they will, they're not afraid to just take Genji instead. Here's Stitches, it as you out. called it out. It comes out. And oftentimes, if Stitches was open, Black just so chose one of the support that was open along with Stitches all the time recently. So with Stitches already gone, Black has to make some adjustments here into the draft with Uther is already open, but which way, which path do they want to take it now at, after Stitches is taken by Tempest? From the surficial look of it, we can assume that MVP Black is wanting to go for the Uther, but something to think about is Uther has only a 28% win rate against Stitches on this patch, mm -hmm. and that can be attributed for a variety of reasons, but knowing that, both teams, MVP Black is going to think twice before they lock in Uther simply because for a variety of reasons he is not too effective against Stitches. But then again, do you want to give away Stitches Uther to Tempest? Yeah, that's right. So that, that target stun, click about. point stun is very powerful and also sometimes against the dive. The Divine Storm has been somewhat effective, but so they're gonna go around. A new Barak first pick, which was a little bit rare. Sometimes the new Barak went through the entire drafting phase, but oft oftentimes, if, of course, and also Dragon Child, you can dive in from the side, from no one, no one actually knowing where the new Barak can dive in from. And Marthil, Rich, just grabbing it for the solo lane, I'm guessing. So a new Barak, never a bad pick in itself. I mean, one of the most solid warriors that mm -hmm. we have in this meta. And Malthio, obviously a decent solo lane pick as well. But something that MVP Black might have wanted to do is go for the Tyrael Malthio instead, because Tyrael is such a solid pick against Malthio, so it denies him away from Tempest. Mm -hmm. And also, Tyrael is very solid against Stitches in general as well, especially if he takes Gorge. And now we see Tassadar Lunara, with both of which are very powerful against Malthio. So. Mm -hmm, but sometimes, and uh, you have to think in the mind, if you know the team really well, as we already know, if Cyan wants to play Tyrael, who else will t play Stitches? I think that's the question they will bring in. Some before when they played played uh, Spider Queen, when Lockdown was supposed to be on Tastar, their draft kind of it didn't work so perfectly. So and they ended up just choosing uh, Kel'thas and having Honkono and Kel'thas when Lockdown was supposed to. So these are some of the things that you have to think as a team when you draft into a team who's going to play with Tyrael. Definitely, and Uther ban coming out from it, BP blocks, somewhat predictable, decent ban, nothing extraordinary. Now what do Tempest want to cut here? They can go for the support choke, obviously, mm -hmm. banning out Ma Malfurion, because Kyocha has a slight preference for Malfurion, but do they necessarily think that's a power ban? 
There are lots of options. I think support choke is definitely a good one. Especially, I think they maybe they want to leave Malfurion in open because they would actually want to take him somewhat. With Stitch's pair up, they do not have any burst. But with this, they can still bring in some gray main action with Lunara with the burst. Not the burst damage, but the sustained damage and with the with the constant healing from the back line. So they instead go around as I predicted and Ben Falstad. So the two safe bands that Tempest could have taken were Falstad and Li Ming. Li Ming generally very strong pick on this patch, very strong against Tassadar as well as well as having the mobility to deal with the Stitches hook. So Li Ming ban was one of the things that they could have done. Falstad is the other and seeing as how MBB Black has always done so well when Saki is on Falstad, I think that's a very reasonable decision mm -hmm. as well. But as expected, MBB Black take away the Malfurion. Now we'll probably see the silence. There's Sam a music. Back. <laughs> 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 well, keep on, keep, keep continue. I was silent, so Ma Malfurion maybe used Twilight Dream. That, but was, anyway. that was a big try Twilight Dream, too. It, it got us both. Yeah, it got the whole building. Oh, so they, they actually want to take away Grey Mane as they have the melee. They want to bring in some burst damage along with Martheo's sustain when the, his heroic pops out. I think this is a very good band. They're taking it away and using it for their own team. I like it because Rayman has a 70% win rate against Lunara on this patch, so that's pretty massive. Definitely, that's the numbers very are high number. on MVP Black, uh, and MVP Black's side. Yeah, and numbers do speak for themselves oftentimes. Tempest, they did bring Lunara, but the win rate for Korea especially, Lunara did not does not have the highest win rate for sure, right? Yeah, Tempest has some good memories on Lunara. They utilized Lunara against Mighty on Towers of Doom in their last match to great success, and they won the mat that match. But Tempest does not seem to know exactly what to do. To be honest, I won't be surprised if we see a medic pick here. Oh, Morales is what you're talking about, but no, Jimmy. I don't think it's going to happen this time. Let's see. Clock sticking down. Lurgar oh. and Dehaka. So they ban Falstead and they decide to pick up their own global because Honkano can also flex into Dehaka sometimes if he wants to. There are lots of flexibility in this roster. Maybe H82 will be on because Honkano seems to be having a great time on DPS right now. Okay, so Tempest's idea seems to be that we're going to give the solo lane to Dehaka, so you're never going to win against Malthiel, but mm -hmm. at least you can always keep even and stay ahead in the rotations. So it's sort of like the default way for Tempest to deal with uh, a losing solo lane. But Chromie! Now we see Chromie. Chromie always a decent pick against Tastar. That's right, not just Tastar, against Ariel oftentimes, but even with Tastar, Regar. Ooh, this is an unusual fit pick, I think, but we're going into Dragonshire very soon, but this last pick was a very big surprise for me, and it may actually catch Tempest off guard at the same time, as I said, it, this is an unexpected pick, last pick, Kuromi. Can MVP pick Black start it, start it off with a great start, or Tempest? We will be starting with 1-0. Let's go into game number one, Dragonshire. In blue, MVP Black. Reset on Chromie, Sake on Greymane, Kyocha on Malfurion, Rich on Martheo, Test on Anubra. And in the red, we see Tempest with Fight on Regar, Honkano on Lunara, Lockdown on Tassadar, Sign on Stitches, and Hippari on Dehaka. Right, here we go. We're gonna see the auto tech build, it seems like, from Chromie. Because they do not have the global once, probably wants to just have the talent on wherever the Hakas tries to come around from the side. You can have that Definitely much vision the on the other side. Mm -hmm. yes. And we see Lockdown going for his favorite Psionic Storm build. Even though everyone else seems to prefer the auto tap build, or, well, not everyone else, but a lot of people, Lockdown has always stuck with his favorite build. And 
we didn't get to talk about this during the draft, but Regar pick, something very standard on Dragonshire. Regar is probably the only support, well, aside from Bribe right wing, that can easily solo camps by himself, and soloing the siege camp is a massive, massive asset when it comes to this map, so decent pickups. That's right, and there was a first gank attempt by Black, did fail. That star did get away against four. I don't think he even had to use the shift for it, and that was a good one. But Black, from the beginning, using that Anubarak pick to actually have those gank, it, it seems like a good sign already, and Tempest, all they have to do is close, stay close to their tower, and be safe, because when it comes to the time when you, where we have to make the big rotations, the Haka will come in handy. Both sides are following their game plans so far. It has been expected that MVP Black is going to take the top shrine while Tempest will take the bottom shrine, but now we see some kind of one-on-one -on -one tussle with Hippati losing. Yeah, it's so hard. Without the sustain, without the healing, to go against solo lane, against Martheo, it's, there's not much that you can really you can really do. It's too much damage every single hit. If you overextend, Rich will be looking for a kill. Solo lane kill is what Rich will be looking for, and I like this play, just staying safe, just soaking up the XP. That's all he has to do. Yeah, definitely. Tempest are no strangers to playing with a solo lane that's behind. I mean, no intention to disrespect modern life, but he often lost the solo lane, and Tempest was always okay with that. They knew how to play around that, and eventually, by the end of the season, modern life was able to utilize that to its advantage as well. There were some mind games going on, and so Hepati may not be as accustomed to deliberately sort of losing the lane and sort of expecting zero help coming out from his team, but so far he's doing a decent job. He's not expected to take the shrine. He's not expected to win the lane. That's right. He's not even expected to hold the outer wall of the fort. He's just expected to survive and stay ahead in rotations, and that's what he's doing right now. Yeah, that's right. And here's a hook onto Reset, onto Chromie. The Nubara comes in for the perfect save right in between Chromie and Stitches. What a nice dive. But because of that, because the lane's so far pushed, they lost all the ammo on top lane and this middle lane. The wall is already open. Sake diving in for the kill and needed a little bit more damage. And Nubarak was down there to save Chromie, so could not really get a kit kill, but if Chromie did not get hooked, I think Anubara could have come to the mid lane, look for the gank. I think that was a perfect timing, too. So something that we have to mention is that Hebati losing the outer wall of the top fort was mm -hmm. something that was expected. Tempest are perfectly okay with that. What is less okay, much less okay, is that they lost the outer wall of the mid fort That's as well, right. and this is huge. They probably did not expect to fall behind in the rotational pressure that's going on right now. And losing mid lane that hard, this is going to take a toll. And it is right now. There's still a half a level behind. Yep, and faster. All he has to do is stall some time because the is already taking the control of the top shrine. He will do just that. Very solid rotations coming out from Tempest. Gaining momentary control over both shrines and Hyde almost finished this bruiser camp, so this is going to provide the buffering that top lane needs because if he had not taken that, top fort will probably be going down very soon. Yeah, that's right. He needs some more pressure to relieve the pressure against him as a Dehaka. And as Rally was calling H82, Hepari, that's the literal, that's the Korean ID. It's called it's jellyfish and how you pronounce it and read it in Korean. H82, it sounds the same, so that's why he's saying Hepari instead of H82. Oh, so it's yeah, the same, sorry. he's calling out <laughs> the Dehaka, it's the same. And here's the big pick died onto Dehaka, there's a burrow for the time being. Regar comes in for the healing, and I think he's going to survive. Very good backup coming out of, from Tempest, mm -hmm. and decent gank attempt from MVP Black as well, but this exchange probably will go in in favor of MVP Black, because in the 2v2, Let's get rooted, but sign there is not much of. Okay, Chromie, especially because Chromie built into auto attack, and it, she does take a long time to actually get those skill shots. So sand blast out to the random spot, or actually hitting the target. Oh, actually gets a kill here. This is huge. This is definitely going to. That's the cast curse. Whatever uh, we talk about, <laughs> yeah. the the anti thing, the opposite reverse thing happens on the game. 
And this is most likely going to lead for the first Dragon Knight for MVP Black. They are almost at level 10. Lockdown will probably not go down, so no big trouble here. Yeah. Having that 10, of course, the early level lead with the structures down, I think that's helping MVP Black immensely. But as you said, Tempest expected this. The early game, they have to. it's very hard to win against all that. But when it comes to late game with the big rotations coming out, I think that's where they're going to be using because they have been thinking for since from the draft that they will lose, but this is exactly the chance for Black to get the kills just like this. This certainly will be another kill. Whoa, nice Brawlro though, did not even get rooted there. Will it change much though? You just have to kill my hype. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great burrow there. Yeah, that no. was a great burrow. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Escape the, all the skill shots and also root. I mean, we have to praise everybody for something this game. Well, the Haka died twice, so. But still, <laughs> H82 doing a fine job here. Mighty fine job. Two forts down. Okay. I don't know. I, I have to say that losing the outer wall of mm -hmm. the mid midfort so early on in the game really snowballed into the situation that Tempest is now caught in. Because it led to the temporary level lead because one outer wall taken down doesn't provide enough of an experience advantage. That's but right. since they lost two outer walls, that snowballed into a half a little advantage, which gave MVP Black enough a window to stay ahead in rotations, have slightly more pressure in all lanes, and eventually that gave MVP Black the rotational momentum to land that three-man gank at top. And although Hepati didn't die immediately to that gank, that eventually led MVP to rest control of the bottom shrine as well. Yeah, that's right. And it seems like Tempest, uh, even after hitting 10, they closed the gap to a single level where it almost became a two-level lead for MVP Black. But Honkana seems to be getting Hit by all the skill shots of Chromie, and if you are now, there's a Gorge onto Chromie, seems like the perfect target. Kyocha seems to be coming in for the time being, and Mubak, there's a Cocoon, the Haka joins in. This is a full team fight. And here goes Ichi Sake diving in, Reset getting very low, and Kono doing some damage. There's a leave, and Kyocha Twilight Dream will not help too much. There's a second kill onto Nubarak. Tempest turning this around now onto Kyocha. There's a hook, ice block for the time being, but who cares? That will be a kill for sure. And Hive dives in like a wolf. That was a very good hook to start off the team fight, and I really need to criticize Kyocha for being really late with his Twilight Dream. Had he used it a bit earlier, mm -hmm. Chromie would not have fallen as fast. And he used it at the timing where pretty much all of Tempest's abilities were on cooldown, so it didn't really matter. It only acted as an AoE damage. I think that was somewhat expected. If Chromie gets hooked, does have the timeout, but still, rather than losing two and using lots of heroic to save your teammate, you can just leave your teammate and try to have the earlier macro to somewhere else. Sometimes that's needed. But this time MVP Black, because they had the level lead, because for the moment they had the talent lead too. So they decided to go help in Chromie. Did not work so perfectly. So a lot of things that MVP Black could have done better, but Tempest executed pretty well, although I am a bit concerned with Lockdown taking Archon instead of Force Wall. Because Tempest did play that well, that ended well, very mm -hmm. well for Tempest, but wouldn't ha it have been much better for Tempest and much easier and with less risk had Lockdown taken Force Wall instead to to wall out MVP Black's backup? Yeah, that's right. If they if they because they took Gorge, it will help a lot more, especially when you need the time for Lunara to do more damage. I think you're on the right track there, but. Maybe they thought because Lara sustain damage is so low, you can't really bring in a lot more burst damage at the same time. So they are thinking of the late game potential with the Twilight Archon, just turning things around. We saw 2v1 Twilight Archon lockdown winning the winning the fight off screen sometimes. Definitely. Tempest have off they very often talk about how the early game doesn't really matter much and if we just get to 20 then we can pretty much win every team fight and oftentimes that's because lockdown takes tassadar and takes archon then twilight archon and at level 20 that's a, such a massive team fight presence that tempest are sort of justified in saying that so definitely it, it 
ties in well with their style of play and their approach to the game. But before level 20, it's not going to help them out that much compared to Forceful. And if they lose a keep very soon, that will be the biggest problem. And Black is looking to charge in a little bit more as Riz Rich is on the Dragon Knight already. And that macro was perfectly done. Deaka was trying to cancel the top shrine a little bit, but was a bit late. And here comes Dive in coming out from H82. The charge onto Honkano onto the other side actually. It's helping him. The Dragon he will come decides from the side. to participate in the team fight instead of taking down the keep. And will this be a good decision? I'm not sure. And I, this is uh, <laughs> the charges are actually helping Tempest so much. Good to dive in. Actually gets hooked by Sign. This w seems like it will be a full team fight close to it. Massive team fight win for Tempest. And I really have to criticize the Dragon Knight for participating in a team fight like that. There was so little he could contribute. Rich should have just trampled down on that keep instead. Then the keep at least we would be dead. Oh my, here's a tormented soul. 3v1, 4v1. Rich with by himself, but by himself, all, with all means, cannot save himself. This so. is going to be the th three camps on the bottom side of the map, as well as the bottom court for Tempest. And Tempest move ahead massively. This is going to be at least a level lead once Tempest sees all the advantages that they deserve right now. And that was a big turnaround. Actually, kicking Konkono to the left side where their line was very weak on the other side and also providing hide to give healing to Honkano. That was <laughs> actually perfect kicks for Tempest. I don't know what exactly happened in Rich's mind that he chose to actually join in the team fight rather than just hitting on to the keep, having that pressure from the side. It worked out perfectly for Tempest and they caught up about as even EXP right now. And, but as you saw from 4v1, Martel can be pretty strong too at the lane. At the late at a late game, it, I think it all comes down to how Tempest wants to rotate the big macro pitcher with H82 being on the Haka. Maybe Rich just wanted to play Professor, you know? That's not how to position in a team fight. You should be here! And Nox went to the side, and you should be here! Oh my, that's Rich. But of course, today is a very important match for both of these teams, so they have to win. Martha will be looking for all the camps. And so Ooh, Tempest, Tempest actually, deciding to go for the more right. measured route instead of taking all the advantages that they could have seized right away. Which is reasonable, I think. But I think they timed it slightly erroneously. Because now they're going to get to cancel out the bottom bruiser camp in time for the shrine instead of when the shrine spawn. And they're behind on the top lane bruiser camp as well, so actually they're behind on the macro game, which should definitely not have happened. So the top lane is pushing, but H82 can join in the team fight anytime. That's the good news for Tempest because they brought in the Haka and Banda falls that from the draft. That is that's the color that they brought into and it seems like they are Ooh, Daka going for the top shrine capture. And this said, is a good decision. Definitely can't agree with this. Okay, because they're putting all the resources on top to clear. Putting Tastar to clear, and Rich is coming to punish this, though. Should do looking for the save from the trait as a speed boost. But here's the root onto sign. There's not use the curse bullet. There is it. The Twilight Dream is real. Ancestral connects onto Rich. Seems like that was even not even needed. There's Rich diving in with the, with his heroic there. So much sustained by himself and lockdown caught onto the other side. That Ooh, was a that great choke. catch by MVP Black. Tempest was in disarray there. One was one person was trying to capture the top shrine and getting out. Two people were trying to take the bruiser camp, which they were late for. And Zine was trying to get a pick. It was a mess, and it turned out to be a huge mess. Yeah, that was a big mess for me to ancestral on Rich. Billfish. But here we go. That did not save stitches anyhow with the cursed bullet used and the burst damage was real. The Tastar positioning was not so perfect. And with this Dragon Knight, I'm pretty sure Black will get keep and they will get the double keep possibly. If we know anything about MVP Black, then they will be looking to turn this into a core. Ooh, let's see. And they, they do. Maybe they want to go for core and Tastar is coming back in five seconds though. Does not have toilet. Does not have Archon. The Honkano just blows in the air! And this is definitely going to be core. Greymane is at full health, whacking away at the core, so is the Dragon Knight. 
And that's gonna be Gorge on the sign, but the hook does not matter. The core goes down. Game one goes to MVP Black as Rich has made some mistakes, but that was enough to actually get the kill and get the core. The macro play out of MVP Black, though they did not have the global, they I think the reason why they're doing so well with the global, they're putting the resources right. And H82 lost that lane way too hard that having the Dehaka doesn't really do anything for Tempest. Because the point of having a Dehaka is to stay ahead in the rotations, mm -hmm. all, even though you sometimes lose your lane. But if you lose your lane that hard and do nothing to wrest control of it back, then Maltheo always stays even in the rotations because he pushes so hard and Dehaka needs so much time to catch up with that wave that by the time that Dehaka is using Brush Stalker, Maltheo is near the bottom of the map anyway. Mm -hmm. So essentially, the mismatch in the solo lane, that dynamic really snowballed all game long. And even though Tempest got one or two very good team fights off, it was not enough because they were continuously out pressured throughout the whole map. Yeah, from the beginning, it was a little expected for us and even for Tempest, I believe, that they will lose the solo lane because of the matchup. But of course, as you said, the losing the middle, middle wall, the port wall was big and Dehaka oftentimes was not pushing too hard because they he could not get the pressure on against Rich. I believe they only got a single fort in that game or not even the top lane. I'm pretty sure that that fort was still healthy and alive. I don't think they even took the walls down on that fort. I'm pretty sure. I'm so, pretty sure of that too, yeah. So H82 really, maybe if they had some position swaps on Kono, also plays a great Dehaka. He used to play lots of Dehaka back in the MVP Miracle. Of course, he's staying in the DPS, the ranged assassin role a lot in this season. But sometimes when you have to take into the big, when you have to go against the stronger opponent, you have to make the surprises. You have to make some style, style changes to it. I think it can work, but for now, they're sticking with it and it did not work too great. And for MVP Black, I think they really knew what to do exactly at the time to snowball their lead because they had the lead, they wanted to get the pick, they got the Dehaka pick twice, and the snowball just got so big after that. Yeah, so as we talked about in the beginning of